Yeah, five thirty uh, four. For an hour and a half already. Oh really? So so you take your wife to work at, at five in the morning? Yeah, yeah. She manages a tobacco shop. She's a deaf dealer. That's what I call her. <laughs> a what? <laughs> a dealer of death, <laughs> selling cigarettes. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, Lee, we got Milos and uh, Chris. You guys can see each other, right? Uh, I've seen Lee for a second. Yeah, it's been been forever. Lee, what's up with you, man? What's going on? Oh, uh, not much. Just same. I was going to say, you, me, Chris, and Milos. This is like a retirement home. <laughs> 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 it's true it's true that's why i call it the old school round table because uh, old 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 school yeah 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 exactly it's got to you got to be 50 and over to be on that table you know so and you and you 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 just turned 50 right uh july actually almost there oh almost. so you're still 49 yeah hanging on oh, to it the fingertips <laughs> all right now tell me this because i see you getting in shape here and uh, you see and, yeah. and it's it looks like uh, you're stepping back on stage no no I'm, oh, i might step on stage if i hand out an award somewhere but that's about it but so you're doing you know, this just just for the hell of it yeah just for the yeah just for getting in shape you know because i still got that little bit of muscle atrophy from the car accident and stuff but it's one of those things, maybe next year if the Masters Olympia did come to and I died it down, if I look good, I might, but I don't want to be one of those people, like I've said, where you walk out on stage and everyone, your fans are excited to see you. As soon as you walk out, they're like, eh, oh, what the fuck did um, he do? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but Chris, and I, Chris and I are actually going to do the couples together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Secret's <laughs> out. Sorry, Chris, I had to let the secret out. Oh, damn it. <laughs> So yeah, that's how I met you, Lee. <laughs> Lee, when I when I seen you '89 at the Universe, you were guest posing with uh, your mom. Yeah, you actually, I actually competed in that. I got second in the lightweights, and then my mom and I did our guest posing. Yeah, that was when my sister fell in love with Milos back in '89 <laughs> when I was 17. My sister, my, my, my sister too. Oh, yeah. I, got, I got my sister falling in love with me last. I got Chris falling in love with my daughter. I could have had all these, could have had all these relatives in the bodybuilding world. Chris, what? Uh, shit. <laughs> you got to keep. Chris, hey, you got to. I'm still chasing Chris for child support. You know she needs some help with the kids now. Come on, come on, Chris. <laughs> she got. Hey, we got to keep. We got to keep it in the family, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, hey. So, hey, did you guys? Followed the uh, the Pittsburgh Pro. I mean, uh, Chris was there. Milos and Lee. Did you guys see uh, the uh, traditional Pittsburgh Pro with the guest poses and all? I've yes, just I've seen, seen it uh, on the internet. You know, Chris was there. Yeah, you had a guy in the show, right, Milos? In the Pittsburgh, yeah, I had at uh, at the Classic Physique Neil Curry. Right. Yeah, he played he plays third, and uh, I mean, uh, I asked you, you know, how he's, uh, uh, you know, he's doing. Look, put it this way. There's one thing. Uh, I, I talked to Jim Mannion, and uh, then he referred me to Tyler. And, and I really asked, like, listen, this uh, height-to-weight ratio, what do you do when, when the guys are a few pounds over? They look super classic, and they have to squeeze down into the, the weight limit, right? And then when they squeeze down that one year, what happens next in the next five years? So you limit them in a progressing, right? So there's a, you know, really that touchy subject of, okay, can we raise the, the weight limit uh, so they can keep improving? Like let's say uh, Chris Bamsad or Logan Franklin, or, you know, right? So this is a perfect example. Uh, Neil looks the best around 100 kilos, 101. Like today, he just sent me the picture that he looked like right now, full, and he's ripped to the bone, right? But to squeak down into that weight, right? Sometimes uh, you just uh, lose that pop. And uh, when you you were there, you know, I wasn't. And uh, I was seeing him right before the stage, right after the stage. I think he was dry, conditioned. Tyler told him perfect condition. He was a little flat, though. A flat, yeah. So th that's that flattish thing. So what do you do with a, the with a flat, right? Last time he competed in Texas, he pulled out of the final show because uh, his stomach was uh, giving him trouble. He actually didn't step on the stage. Logan was backstage and said, oh, he had such a bloated blood stomach, uh, you know, the acid uh, reflux and all that stuff. So this time the plan was he's supposed to have uh, four meals before the prejudging. But, uh, you know, he had some stomach issues. He gets scared and he only had two. And then for finals, he's supposed to have two and he only had one. I said, why? 
you know, so that's when he told me he was a little bit uh, scared of that. I said, like, well, he didn't have a bloatness, he didn't have uh, issues. And I put it this way, I mean, he was close third, like a couple of points behind Camilo Diaz, who used to compete as an open. Uh, you know, so all, all these kind of things, right? Should you maybe uh, have like a UFC a couple of days before <laughs> you do the weigh-in? So they have a little bit more time to fill up. I know, uh, uh, Chris, you had the same issue with Brian at the yeah. uh, Arnold Classic, right? Yeah, so, it's yeah. always like 24 hours they want you to get on stage. There's, there's no way that even I would want to, I would want more time, even if I was in the open bodybuilding, to have more time than 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. But but to answer your question, Dennis, I mean, I, I've seen uh, four guys posing. I didn't see Big Rami, and I was going to ask you what <laughs> happened. I assume... He was on the poster, so he was uh, expected to be there. But uh, Derek Lansworth, I mean, what I've seen is it was what we talked in the last uh, uh, you know, episode. We, you, you mentioned uh, his name, and I said everybody thinks he's instantly top five at the open division. Uh, for me, he was the most impressive guy on the stage. Yes, uh, Nick uh, Walker looked like an absolute freak. You know, Labrada looks like Labrada, right? Labrada was top four. I mean, and you can see potential. Labrada is going to probably better his last year's condition. And uh, Brandon Curry, obviously, is uh, off season, uh, off of everything. So he didn't look as impressive as maybe uh, um, these three guys. Yeah. But these guys are all off season. That's I, I thought about that also. And they all are eating right now. I was just... Mm -hmm. I was just impressed with the fact that he was able to stand there and not not only look out of place, but you know, pushing the likes of some of the best guys in the world. You talk. Uh, you you're know, talking he, about. He, you're talking about Derek right now. Yeah, about well, Derek. Yeah. Unbelievable, yeah. man. I was. Dennis, I was impressed. I was standing right next to Dennis, and I was like, "Oh, holy <laughs> shit!" Like, yeah. that was, I, happening right now? That, huh? That's. That's not off season. Come on now. I was off season. When I was off season, I was off season. <laughs> no, you're off season. You just off. Yeah, they were, you were, they were, they were off, off season. Deep up in it. He was <laughs> taking was pictures talking. with a bucket of bucket of Kentucky fried chicken on his lap. <laughs> hey, and those hungry meals. Chicken. You used to eat those hungry meals all the time. Yeah, oh, they were good, weren't they? The hungry man oh, meals. Oh, man. The hungry man meals or whatever. And <laughs> Salisbury steak and the whatever. Corn. Stuff. Yeah, that was good. So, well, I so Lee, when you yeah, look yeah, when yeah, you look yeah. at the Lee, when you look at the guest poses this weekend, what what did you see? I actually like I like everyone else. I really thought um, Derek looked great. You know, thinking if he can keep that size and come in condition, like really good condition, he like I said, easily. You know, we've seen Hardy in the top five, being a shorter type guy, and that, and even Bonnack, and the the way Derek looked, if he brings that same mass with his conditioning. I could easily see him top five in that. But, yes, as Mila said, Dennis, you need to clear up where was her army. I'm sick of seeing all these podcasts and people coming up. Why wasn't he there? I uh, know. He don't know Wasn't uh, even there. Don't know the fucking real shit. But trying to yeah. make up something. Everybody, yeah, has, make everybody up. has some stories, you know. And I'm trying to – and I'm going through the internet to find out what happened because I don't even know. <laughs> I seriously don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I was there to support him because, you know, we, we agreed that I'd come to Pittsburgh to help him out. I was there. <laughs> He's the one that didn't show up. He did so, a, he did a, he did a call me or he missed his flight. Listen, I, I'm, all, all I know is that he, it, you know he he he's okay supposedly so he's not I haven't <laughs> spoken to him I, I I reached out a couple of times I, he didn't respond and and I didn't hear nothing back so uh, I'm still waiting to to hear from him to find out what really happened because oh, no, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have said that Dennis because now Nick Trujillo is going to be like breaking news even Dennis James cannot <laughs> find Rami he's looking for Rami Rami will not even reply to Dennis James what is going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can see it now. But it's, you know what? I was asked maybe a hundred times this weekend, you know, and I had the same answer. I said, guys, I, I wish I would know because uh, I would let you, I would tell you because, uh, you know, at this point, right, I still don't know what happened. I still don't know. Um, I mean, all I know is that I, I think that was a big mistake not to show up in Pittsburgh. So walk, walk us through Like, so we, when you was on your way there, you still thought he was going to be there? Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
I, 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 you know, I felt, because uh, he was supposed to land on Thursday night, and I, I told him, I said, listen, uh, I'm catching a flight Thursday night, so I will arrive late. I will arrive Friday morning at 9. Everything was cool. And then when he did leave for that flight, I was told by someone who books his flights that they changed it to the next day. He will arrive Friday night, and that's the last I heard. Yeah. That's literally the last I heard. I didn't, Not good, man. I, I don't even get a response from the people around him that I talk to. You know? <laughs> so, so, so it's it's yeah, yeah. So, what does that say to you as the as you know I, I don't, someone in his tight circle? I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, it, I don't think it, it's, it's, I don't know. It's not good. I don't, I don't think we should jump to conclusions. We shall yeah. wait for Nick Trigilli to give us the real story, okay? Just, everybody <laughs> yeah, just yeah. wait. The, the real everybody truth. Just... The real truth. No, I, I, I still, I still hope that he will, he will contact me and, 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 and fill me in what, what you happened. You think this is, you think, so do you think if he came in, lights out? That won't affect him, or do you think it's going to affect him? I, I, what the main thing for me is, I try to, I, I just want to know what is he thinking, not going there without calling and, and excusing himself in any any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that that bothers me a little bit right now because you know something could have happened. Yes, something could have mm -hmm. happened. He could have been in the hospital. You know, we don't know, but the people around him should know. So when we know that this is not the case, so. There had to be something else, and I, I don't know. I, I really don't. I'm 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 disappointed. I'm kind of disappointed, and I'm kind of I was worried, you know, to a point where like you know what's what's going on because I talked to him three days before the show. I said or three or two days before he was supposed to leave. I said, listen, make sure you don't you know everything is good. Don't miss your flight because I know he's he missed a couple of flights here and there, you know, by accident. <laughs> Right. I'm just going to I'm just going to get the pen out now and start doing up some graphics for Panic Mode 2.0 shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't have any excuse uh, for him, and I, I'm I'm not going to make up any excuses. We'll have to see what happens. What's come? What comes from him when 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 he's uh, ready to talk? I guess. So what do you see from Nick Walker, Dennis? What I see from Nick Walker, I see from Nick. Yeah. What I see is I, I kind of hope that he's not doing the same mistake that I did and is trying to get too big just because a, a big guy is winning the Olympia or won the Olympia the past two years. Nick Walker is not that tall. So, I mean, he doesn't need to be 300-something pounds, you know, and, and I think he should make sure that he's not, you know, blowing his proportions all the way out the but window. Dennis, did you? don't you think we all got caught up in that number? At yeah, one time or another but that's why, our, that's why I hope career. he's not doing the same mistake. But it, you know, it looks like that he's going for size no matter what. And, yeah, but uh, don't you think that this is the only way he can actually win? Because he's not going to, you know, you know outshape anybody. He's not going to, you know, be more aesthetic. So, I, I mean, uh, he has to put uh, puts the cards on, on the table. For me... But, Okay, listen, going into the Arnold Classic last year, I think that even we talked. I just said openly, I mean, aesthetically, he is not uh, in a winner before the show. But uh, 13 seconds being on that stage, the page judging so um, nobody can touch him. Right. You know, I, I said it. I mean, he was so overwhelmingly powerful, big, and conditioned, and then he kept his stomach flat and super deep abs. So he created the illusion of, hey, size matters. He killed them on size, and this is now Olympia. So, Nick Walker against uh, Hadi Chupan. Is he gonna out condition him? No matter how good condition, he's not going to. You know, there are no feathers, striations, hardness, polishment like, uh, you know, Hadi. But if he is uh, considerably bigger, just he has a chance. Same thing with uh, Nick Walker, uh, Lila Brad. Uh, Hunter brother, obviously, Lee, and uh, uh, against Brendan Curry. You know, I think that uh, Nick was most disappointed that uh, Big Ramy didn't show up because he probably wanted to challenge him with this new size. And, uh, people were going to go crazy. But, uh, you know, if you ask me, I mean, I know that is because I was very much involved with you back in the day when you were blowing up and, and, uh, and getting that size. But you know, still to this day, for me, freaked out. Exploding fool Dennis James was a factor that everybody worried. You know, this is how I see it. This is how I see Nick Walker. I mean, if I would be, uh, you know, putting my my money down on bets, uh, I would bet 
uh, more money that he can uh, move up in placing by being just absolute freak. Oh, he's going to definitely move up. He's definitely challenging. He's going to challenge for the title for sure. There's no doubt about it. I, I just that, hope that, that he keeps doing what he was doing and controlling his midsection because he was. I was really impressed about how he controlled his midsection. <laughs> Because when, when he turned pro, when he came out of his first pro show, you know, it, it was a little, it was distended, but he somehow started to control it. And I think it's practice, which, you know, if he keeps that up, you know, I think he's doing all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I was with you. The, in, that was Chicago Pro the, for his pro debut. I was with you when you taking pictures backstage with him. Yeah, I think he plays the fourth at that show. Yeah. And yeah, there was the moments when he would lose the moment section. After this, at the Arnold Classic, his stomach was flat, you know, glued to the spine, all, you know, pre-judging and finals. Mm -hmm. So I was super impressed. I don't know, you, you and Chris saw him on the stage. Did he lose it this time a little bit? Because he's like yeah, 40 yeah, pounds it, it, yeah, 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 you can yeah, see it. Yeah. You can see him poking his, poking his head out. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Dennis, yeah. I, but Milos, I think Dennis is referring to the fact that when we're getting ready for the shows like the Olympia, mm -hmm. I mean, Dennis was a front runner to the, in the world. In the gym, for sure. <laughs> to the in the gym, yeah. And then we that, went right? on, and we. <laughs> God damn, it, shit, shit. That was in the gym. In the gym is scary as hell. I, I don't scare anyone in the gym, but Dennis did. And then when we got on stage, you know, you could see, you know, some of the things that you know maybe, maybe came in too full, ate too much or whatever. And I think that that's what Dennis is uh, referring to when yeah. when it comes to uh, Nick Walker. And, I was the one guilty of that because I was advising him. You know, yeah, I know, I know. Many I was times he was over there feeding him. Yeah, but but listen, I mean, again, now just to touch that subject, right? Take responsibility. You were scared of him, right? You like his freaky look. You like that with fucking, the tank top, huh? With the yeah, tank top, chest, chest shoulder down, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but again, uh, big Dennis, not scale down Dennis, right? This is how I see it. Well, no, no. I would have, if, if it was, if I was going to go against him and it was going to be the toughest physique, is when he was scaled down. Because to me, like I, I told him, he reminded me of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, who's that? Um, a Pinto. Say it like it did back then. <laughs> <laughs> reminded me of a Ford Pinto and I'm a Ferrari, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I still remember to this day when he said, yeah, he compared me to a Pinto. <laughs> hey, no, hey, I and you know what? Like and, 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 and when you I know, first saw you, but then you start to change into a, and a, a different physique. But yeah. I thought you were the closest to Kevin when, no. I, when I first saw you. Yeah, and I agree. I agree. If I could turn back the time, I would probably not push it as much as I did. And I'm not talking steroids. I'm you talking, didn't have to. You didn't have I'm to. I'm not talking steroids. I'm talking food. You know, True, yeah. but but you know it was there was Ronnie. You know everybody thought you know ah, we got. But, but, but I always played my own game, Dennis. I, I did, and I know uh, uh, Lee played his own game, and I feel like that. You know, I was always the point to the like. Okay, I didn't want to get my stomach past a certain point, no matter what. Like as far as if I had to change that, then I, I'm just gonna try to grow without making my stomach change. That was always my goal since day one. Yeah. I still, I still like remembering the time at San Francisco with Chris. I know he doesn't like to think about it sometimes. When we walked off stage, and I said, "Chris, what were you weighing?" Chris goes, two sixty. I went, "Oh fuck, you got beat by a guy weighing one ninety nine. He's like, "Fuck you." Uh, <laughs> I was there, Milos. We were there, right? Yeah. Isn't that the show that uh, Chris actually didn't finish? That yeah, he was no, 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 that's no, the show Lee won. Lee won that show. And no. I remember. And Dexter, I remem Dexter was third. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Don't start that shit. I remember. <laughs> I was supposed to compete in that show, and for whatever reason, I had to pull out. And Frisco? Yes. You don't remember? So, it, was at, it was right after the Arnold, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, Milos, you don't remember? Did we walk by accident into that damn gay club or something? We ended up? <laughs> by accident. <laughs> that wasn't by accident. What do you mean it wasn't by accident? We you didn't know. like to go to those places. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> yeah, which, which year was that? No, not that 2001? 2001, 2001 or 2002? Two, 2002. 2002, yeah. I so, remember because so I... Did you play third? Second. Second. Yeah. Don't bring it up, Milos. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, to be honest, to be fair... 
We have all beaten each other on this panel. Oh, Truth. No. Truth. 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 Y'all turn the tables oh, after, no. shortly after. So I remember, I remember saying second the Christian Beyond name. Let's keep, let's name keep name the now. history how it really happened. <laughs> <laughs> True, true. I remember because I remember because I remember seeing Lee when other people were carping up. Lee was just drinking protein shakes. You remember that? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I watched. I watched. Him say, yeah, he was still doing his shakes. Hey, Explain this, Lee. I always did protein drinks up until the show, even the day of the show. If, if the show was Saturday, I was still training in the gym on Friday. I never changed anything. I just kept everything exactly the same up until the show day, even. I remember the morning once before an Arnold Classic, I was down in the gym doing cardio. People were like, aren't you competing later today? I said, yeah, but, you know, I'm bored. I've got time to do. I said, why, if I look good, why should I change anything? They're like, well, I can't believe you're doing cardio the morning of the show. I'm like, yeah. But you know, but you, but you know what? This is really common now that people train all the way up to the show. You see it everywhere now. You know, back in the days, you know, the last three days when you carve up, you just sit in a room and keep your feet up. And I try to do that. Now everybody trains, you know. Milos, how, how, how do you see it now? Because you train a lot of guys. Yeah, I always did. You, you remember even when we do a uh, depletion Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you go for that pumped workout, right? That last workout, uh, though. That's the last one, though. Yeah, that's the last one. And then, But I, I would do it sometimes Friday as well. Everything depends. You know, and, and then take the uh, uh, off, you know, in the afternoon. Uh, but but I'm just uh, puzzled because I, I know Lee um, that you were never big on anything specific, right? No. You were not on the crazy cycles. You probably never touched the insulin, right? No. When you were uh, preparing for the show, you didn't do any crazy shit depletion and loading, right? But never, drink- never, never, never did carb loading ever. I tried it once, I think when I was 18, and just didn't like it. So I just go on my. I think the lowest I ever went on carbs was like 250 grams would be the lowest I ever went. Mm-hmm. So I just keep eating the same food up to the show. And generally, two weeks out, I was generally ready. So then I'd just maybe add a little bit more carbs in. And when I say, look, if I'm 250, I might just go to 375, 350, never a crazy amount, and then just stay in that sort of thing. But yeah, I never did any sort of the carb loading. I just slowly cut my water out. I still had about a litre of water even the day of the show. I never cuddle out completely so I just yeah, and even when it came to gear I never did insulin doesn't mean hey if I'm doing a master's comeback I might come see you Milos because you know <laughs> there, you <go. laughs> there you go yeah but uh, you're drinking protein shake on the day of the show yeah and the thing was too it was egg protein so people used to say how can you have egg protein all the sodium in it and all stuff the sodium like that. But, yeah but never never bothered me it just yeah I'd always have um, I think it was J-Rob brand J-Rob used to have that egg protein back in the day so I'd be drinking that just because sometimes I didn't feel like eating and I felt like food would bloat my stomach. So I'd just drink the protein drink and yeah, never had a problem with it. Yeah, wow. That's that's nice little refreshing surprise. Yeah. Are you gonna uh, switch? Are yeah. you gonna switch? Next, next, I gotta say next week his clients will be protein drink. I was about to show. say, are you gonna switch to shakes now? <laughs> it's probably a lot easier now with the good way you isolate because you don't have to worry oh, about yeah. the bloat and stuff. Yeah, the Mega Mass 4000, I wouldn't recommend. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, uh, uh, Dennis, last time we were doing this, George Farrar at the end said something about that uh, study from Harvard University, right? They studied and it is proven and published that people taking more than 25% of animal protein live less, right? You remember that? Yes. <laughs> yeah, and we didn't have a you know, uh, a time to jump in. So, yeah. um, Dennis, you are like German, precise, fucking uh, the discipline, right? <laughs> you, you, you monitored every gram of everything, right? Right. How much protein, and carbs, fat, like I did, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, Chris, maybe you're not so strict, but we bodybuilders follow the diet and we can maybe uh, stand behind and say, this is what I did for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. What is Harvard University finding volunteers to measure? I'm going to do 25% of animal protein. Uh, I'm going to eat what? The remaining 75% is going to be, you know, the vegetable source protein, right? And then I'm going to take this much and I'm going to really say off the drugs, alcohol, I'm going to cigarettes. I'm not going to, I'm going to 50 years do this shit 
and uh, then these people are going to do 30% and these people are going to do 50%. Right? And now we can publish the study. The, the people that take more animal protein are going to live 13 days less. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, really, it's irritating to me to listen to this kind of, you know, okay, science and all this research. Really? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine anybody being that disciplined? How did they find those people? Somebody's going to dedicate the life to the research, and I'm going to, 40 years, eat what they uh, tell me to eat. Hey, it's impossible. You know, so, uh, on that note, I mean, uh, uh, what was your percentage rate of animal protein, Dennis? <laughs> My, for me, it was all, all animal protein. 100%, yes, yeah. exactly. I All didn't. I didn't even get protein shakes because the protein shakes in Thailand was it was illegal. There was no protein shakes. You know, you can get all the drugs in the pharmacy, but you can't get protein shakes because that's <laughs> dangerous for your health. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but, uh, but, uh, yes. Speaking of that, Dennis, Lee, did, did you take uh, a lot of protein at least? I was on about two, two and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight all the time. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. And I always, I always wondered about them studies, like Mila said, you'd have to be actually just eating that, nothing else. And then, like you say, your lifestyle, stresses in your life, everything else, genetic makeup. So how can you just say by eating this less? And I was just saying to someone yesterday, because I was eating some chicken and rice and he was eating an apple pie. And I said, oh, I'm sick of eating this. He goes, yeah, eating clean, you got to be happy. I said, I agree. I said, you know, after all these years, if I just eating clean, like they say, I said, they say it can add life to you. I said, okay, if it gives me one more year, okay, it's one more year of being miserable, eating fucking chicken and rice. I'd rather eat McDonald's and die a year sooner. So it's like, you know, at least I'm happy. For sure. Chris How keeps you, putting Chris? up pictures every time he goes out eating. I go and look at Chris's food when he's at the seafood restaurants and yeah. eating all that oh, stuff while I'm eating some. He's a seafood fanatic. I just realized it this weekend. <laughs> Boy, I get hey, you. Dennis. Hey, Chris can eat. Dennis, wait, Dennis. So I was going to say before we got too far, you know, this, you know, Jermaine and I, you know, put together the best of the best every year. Um, I know it was reported that everyone was, you know, very disappointed that uh, Rami didn't show and Rami should have been up there, Rami, Rami, Rami. And it was cool. And I'm not going to discount that theory or whatever, but. Those guys made the crowd very happy. Everybody, they were buzzing about Derek. They were mm -hmm. buzzing about uh, the possibilities, and it wasn't like it was. It wasn't like focused on Rami. It was more like Derek stole the show. To be honest, yeah. And everybody up there looked great. Like everybody came, you know, with some very decent package, and they was able to hit their quarter turns. And you could start to see uh, the the proportions of the physiques, and you could see. You know what's to come. You know uh, you can almost also like they they was almost comparing against each other a lot. So you understand what I'm saying? It's like that's that's what I took from the show. Like I came away from that. It wasn't. Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, oh, I, man. I still believe that there was a, a lot of people showed up because they thought they were going to see Rami on that stage. So and you know, unfortunate for them to you know, I mean, they just they got a great show, absolutely. I mean, they this got guy's, a great show. This guy's all delivered, and you know, and at the end, while it was going on, I don't think anybody was thinking about Rami at that point. You Not know, at that point. They were just enjoying, uh -huh. and like you said, Derek Lunsford impressed the shit out of me. No, I, was it's been crazy. Is, <laughs> you have any idea how heavy Derek was? Two sixty. <laughs> that's what the. That's what. The, how is she going to make weight? Why would you want to make weight when you got cuts in your quads at 260? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I would just want to bodybuild at that point. Why would you want 50 or 60,000 when you can get 200, 300, whatever I, you can get? I think if Derek... I'm going to put some zeros I think on if that Derek, song, gun. I think if he drops down to 230, 235, he's lethal in the open. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. He would literally Bro. fight... With everybody, William, Hardy, Brandon, and whoever whoever else is there for for, for that title, I believe it. I well, really do. Tweak, still tweaking his posing. He's gonna. I mean, think about this. His taper is so nice. Hardy Hardy is a little full in the stomach for my taste, but this guy has that taper, has that shape, and they saw it from when he turned pro at the USA. Shout out to the USA champions. Uh, he, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He, uh, he's, he's a bona fide USA champion and a, and a bona fide, he could be one of the best if he, he does everything right. 
Should he just say fuck it and just do the open? Just do any show to qualify? Open. I don't. I don't. It's, no, it don't make any sense. He's a grown man. He's married. He has a family. Mm -hmm. he's a good guy. Lee, he's a good, he Lee, speaks well. Lee, how tall he's are you? Legitimately, what's what's your real height? Legitimately, yeah. Okay. Five, six, when I go when I, when I go to the doctor and I I get measured, the doctor says I'm five foot five. And a half. People okay. go, oh, you throw it a half on, don't you? I said, that's what the doctor says on okay. five, five. <laughs> okay, so so Derek is five six, mm -hmm. and you saw what he looked like at two at two sixty. Yeah. So yeah, there's no way he could easily, he, well, could he, easily do. He should do the open. No, like he's one to two twelve. Just go into the open, like we've all said. He'll be top. Is he's going to be a contender if he comes in conditioning with that size? Like we've seen Bonac get up in the top three, Hardy. So there's no reason why he can't That's be right. no qualify or second or even push for first, huh? depending on how everyone shows up. Hey. And like even the money, as Chris said, the money some way you can't beat the money. And even him getting second or third, I think that would be more of a feather in his cap than winning the two twelve again. If you're getting second or third in the Open Olympia, like I mean, everyone's going to be like, oh my god, maybe he should have won. The talk would be about that more than if he won the two twelve again. He should definitely do the Open. The boy yeah, is the new pound for pound. He's the new pound for pound for sure. Yeah, Milos, what'd you say? <laughs> he's not qualified. But, you know? hey, you think he would have a problem qualifying in any of the shows? No, but uh, that that still means that he's going to have to do the show before the Olympics. Invite. Remember, remember that Hadi Chopin in 2019 was qualified for both. Right. So he chose. But uh, Derek, as of now, is not qualified. He could easily, Unless, where, he could easily do a show. We petition to get him an invite. I yeah. don't even. I don't even yeah. think he needs an invite. I think he can just go to any show in, uh, leading up to the Olympia, which is the, what's the last show they have. There's, there's a show. There's a show in. Uh, um, I think there's a show in September. This shows. I think there's another one in November. Isn't that at uh, California in November? Possibly. But I think being a two twelve champion, he should should at least get an invite for one championship Definitely to get an invite. For yeah, one. yeah, one, hey, one, one, two twelve is better than none. So it's like, hey, you two twelve, Mister Olympia, that should give you, you know, a little bit of a golden ticket at least. Come on, After exactly. I personally think that two twelve champion should be qualified for next year's uh, Open Olympia. Yeah. For me, hey, okay, listen, All right. put put Flex Louis next to Derek Lunsford. What do you guys say? Oh, that'd be that'd be tough. <laughs> I love I love Flex because Flex I'd, has I'd a have, cartoonish look. It's like oh, it's hard to say. I'd have to go for the width. I'd have to go for Derek with the width, brother, on that one. And to be yeah. honest, Flex be honest. beat. Yeah, you know, Flex beats Derek every time, right? So we had those comparisons. It was handicapped though, bro. Yeah, yeah. handicapped. I, but also, we never seen the Flex two twenty five on the stage. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. to, you know, we, we saw him squeaking into the two twelve. Right, and you see some pictures with Neil Hill, you know, going into rip to the bone dry and two point. Uh, I mean, uh, I would like to see it. We, we talked about this last time, Dennis, and we agreed. Uh, Derek has that structure. We taper once he lifts his arms. That the uh, X frame is ridiculous, especially with these legs. Legs at the last year's Olympia. I even told Derek uh, at the Arnold Classic. I said, Derek, what were you doing? Like riding the horse, kind of. You know, uh, front poses, <laughs> the leg position, right? I didn't like he was throwing the leg. You know, well, like typically when people don't have a quad and a sweep and they put that uh, leg out, you, know, you have it. But he says, like, oh, yeah, uh, I guess uh, uh, Honey, you know, made him do it. You know, he liked that way better. So he oh, agreed bro. with it. <laughs> <laughs> bro, <laughs> whatever. He's like. The, yeah, the posing yeah. alone is gonna is gonna move them up a couple spaces. Whatever happened back to posing in our day when it was sometimes we'd get in trouble. Keep your feet together, heels together. When yeah. we had to stand in the relaxed pose, we weren't allowed to stand like we just got off a horse and be like heels together. <laughs> I think something about that front double, right? People always ask how I got here. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn. Day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, his legs improved tremendously. I mean, you guys saw him. Yes. I've just seen the pictures. But you uh, know, but if he if he really drops down to two twelve or makes weight, I'm I'm afraid that he's going to flatten out certain body parts. Yeah. And because legs. we saw what he looked like at two sixty, I think this is going to be. I think it's a mistake for him to to diet down into two twelve and maybe come in with a flat chest and maybe the legs again losing yeah. losing size. It's gonna. It's I don't know. It, 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 did you think it might hurt him? He's a former wrestler, and I feel like he can get down, but it's going to be hard, and I think it's going to take a lot out of his physique. And uh, I just, I would just like to see the the history be made of just just the best physiques in the world. I mean, he could be, uh, you know, Momo had that nice pull. My like, Momo was even shorter than him, but you could be a short guy and just have him reach super impressive and be some really big people. I would just like to see it myself. That's right. You can be a short guy and be impressive, Chris. Thank you very much. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> hey, I was just funny with you. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but Derek used to go from 245 down to 212. Now he's 260. Yeah. And maybe yeah. he has a couple more months of growing. <laughs> you know, imagine this. Uh, you see, we uh, just overthinking. Uh, he he has never been in this position that he has to go down from two. That's a... Uh, you know, 40, you know, something pounds that he needs to lose. He How doesn't look he? like he has that much to lose. No. How old is he, Dennis? How old? I think he's in his late 20s. Mid, mid, mid to late 20s. Late 20s. He's got to be late 20s now, I think. But, bro, <laughs> he's just not coming into his prime. Yeah, and that's the thing, just like Milos said. And that's the thing, like Milos said, at 260, he wasn't a fat bloat at 260. He not could at see all. condition there. So, you know, look at it from there, how he's at 260. I'm thinking 225 would he'd be in pretty good condition around that area. I don't so. even think he has to lose that much. Yeah. Not from what he looked 20 like. Twenty pounds. This. Twenty pounds. If max. he was a true two sixty, if it was really two sixty this past weekend, mm -hmm. yeah, twenty, twenty five pounds max. Twenty five pounds, yeah. He would have been yeah. he would have been spot on. And and probably fuller, you know? Looking um, nuts. But then again, I mean Hardy is working with him, you know. I mean, I don't know. would he want to put him next to Hardy? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's another thing. What do you got? What do you want to put him next to Hardy? You know, does he does he want to? Exactly, exactly. That I, might be have something to do with the with the back and the forth right now. Yeah, I Who mean, knows? he already said that next year he will he will go into the. I think next year he will go into the open. This will be his last. I don't know if it's his last title defense or not. Why well, suck a guy down? How far but, is that down? That's but, like. Yeah, but what are the other guys going to think? Like Kamal and Chon Clarita, seeing what he looked like this past weekend. <laughs> what are you, what are you well, going to do? Great. He's not going to make the way. <laughs> they, will just, they will basically just hope that he won't make hey, weight. Hey, listen, but speaking of that, did it ever happen in the history of Olympia or, or even in pro bodybuilding that uh, 212 guy didn't make the weight and didn't let them compete? I don't recall any of that scenario. I don't know either, right? I got them Charles. Did they Rivera. dock him points or what? Yeah. The UFC uh, points? half pound. I they know. I saw it. I saw it half a pound over. They stripped him off his title. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, Dennis, you don't remember. How about you, Chris? Do you remember that anybody failed the weight before? I haven't heard. No, I've seen. It. Look, wait, wait, wait. I've seen. Yeah, oh yeah, I seen. Uh, the, not it eventually still made it. Flex Lewis had to do colonics one time. I think <laughs> it was Flex Lewis. He had to find a doctor on a on a on a Wednesday night to do the colonics. And um, Eduardo Correa, he was he was like a pound or two pounds over. He had to do something to get it to get it fixed till the next day. So it, it happened that they missed weight at the first weigh-ins. Well, but they all yeah. came back I think, that, still I think, made I think that happened a couple of times, didn't it, at the very beginning when it was a 202. I think a few came in yeah. a little too heavy at the first, when they first started the 202, a few come a bit over. But like you said, they had a day or two to, you know, get rid of it. So Yeah, I had a one hour in Arizona when I was in the universe. I was two pounds <laughs> overweight. I said, shit, I never knew. Like, oh, I mean, I was... <laughs> on every diuretic already dry like <laughs> shit <laughs> so how can you so it's like okay let me get out in uh, Tucson, Arizona right mm -hmm. and run on the streets I almost passed <laughs> out you know uh, but I made it yeah now speaking of that but I don't know in IBB that ever happened wow I don't, I don't recall anybody missing weight 
and and not being able to compete. So they all somehow all managed to make weight at the end. Uh, know, by the way, Lee, you said doctor's office. Uh, you were five, five and a half. Uh, mm-hmm. When twenty years ago? <laughs> Uh, actually, no, it was, only, it was only like a month or two ago because I went and got okay. a CT scan on my heart. The growth, the, growth, the, growth, the growth hormone's finally kicking in. I'm half an inch bigger. Uh, <laughs> hey, Chris, how, how tall are you? I'm 5'10 and 5'10 oh, and a half. Oh, you wish, you wish. I'm 5'10". Yeah, that was... Hey, listen, that, I was 5'11". That must I was 5'11". Uh, I was competing. Chris, that, yeah, but when you're competing, that was, that was about... I'm 5'10". Five, I said I came down. That was 500 fucking squat sessions yeah. ago. And then, he, and then he had the spinal... <laughs> then you had the spinal surgery. Now you're only 5'7". Come we're, on. We're, we're <laughs> all, we all shrink, guys. There's listen, nothing we can do. I, I was uh, 179 centimeters. So it's 5'10 and a half. And then, of course, I didn't want to say... I'm going to And a half. So I'm I said 5'11". So I was with, uh, 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 and I, I was standing next to you, Chris, and uh, Ronnie, and Dorian, and Flex, and we are all about the same height, right there. But then uh, uh, Jay Cutler was, you know, much shorter. Now I'm taking pictures of Jay Cutler, and you know, you guys the same he, height. You say, Jay, are you putting something in your Chris. in your shoes? No, I, I, went with, I went with Logan Franklin <laughs> in Texas. You know, they had that height. Hey, let me just. Let me just see what it is. That's fucking five nine. Oh yeah. shit! Oh, so I went to Reno, <laughs> Reno, and I got five eight and uh, and three quarters. Like, oh man! Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm I'm a scared shitless. Yeah, with you shrink, uh, you're shrinking. You're no, shrinking. without the shoes. Milo, <laughs> and, and Chris. I'm five eight and three quarters. Oh man! Chris, when we stand yeah. next to each other, how much taller you think you are than me? Are you taller than me? me? Are we the same height? I'm taller than you. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be. <laughs> yeah, you used to be for sure. But right hey, now, right now we're at the same height. Dennis, you 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 you, you, you placed ahead of me a couple times. Oh, uh, oh and uh, I ate and I enjoyed the fuck out of it. That's what I want to ask. Because <laughs> you called you know, me. Because Chris hey, called me a pinto. Because it was tight. It was tight. It was tight. But. I knew you wanted to beat me. Oh. I, knew, I knew it was, what was that, what was that show? Uh, the first in show in, Hung- in Hungary. Hungary. In Hungary. I don't know how you won, but you yeah. won. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you how I won. You was talking, uh, hey, you was talking all in different languages and shit over there talking. German, German, talking judges. German judges. German judges. You caught me slipping. Like- Milo, hey, yeah, I caught you slipping. Caught me slipping. Caught you slipping. I, I you agree. Slipping. I agree because you were off. You were off. But you were riding that Chris Comier fucking. Uh, 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 I was wrong. No, because you're riding. It's like, yeah, I'm Chris. Yeah, because you know, it, 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 and we gotta agree. A lot of times, these tours, especially under Wayne Demilia, I gotta say, because you know, <laughs> you know, the, the name game. You know, there's people placing ahead of you that have no business being there just because. Me, me fucking, and Dexter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, I was beating Dexter the first four years of our pro career. Oh, okay. Until I start yeah. getting too big, and yeah, then, you know, yeah, yeah, so, me too. So, so and, I, and I'm like, so you beat me, and then what? What I mean, you beat me. How was that? Because I know it was like I was like, damn, I was like, it was not so much beating you. It was for me the the the, the thing that 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 I was really happy about was for them to recognizing me to be one of the guys that are allowed to beat you. Because, you know, Chris Comier was in the show, and, you know, you already know, oh, shit, they're going to give it to Chris no matter what he looks like. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of shows where we did a lot of tours where people placed ahead of us. I'm talking, you know, Flex Wheeler, Chris Comier, la, 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 Kevin LeBron. <laughs> where they, where, <laughs> where they, was, they, they weren't in condition, <laughs> you know, but they already have that, you know, and that was back in the days where it's like, okay, top three. You know, back then they did three call-outs of three. Max, mm-hmm. you yeah. remember, you remember, Milos, you remember exactly, because I'm still saying this, 2001 Arnold Classic. Yeah. You're, I got, I got my, no, I was third. My, <laughs> my second. <laughs> the 2000, that was fourth, the first one, 2000. Oh, that's, what, yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. So, me yeah. Doing, okay, me hold on, hold on. I'm going I'm to tell you right now, because it was, it was tradition, the call outs is always three. You remember that, right, Lee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah three guys, not six, yeah. like now five and six. Yeah. So remember 2001, 
the Arnold in 2000, I got fourth, was my first Arnold. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking, yeah? 2001, I came back way bigger. You remember? We yeah. called Jim Mannion into the room. You remember in the yeah. morning? At the double yeah. tree back then. And Jim Mannion looked at me and was like, don't, don't do nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to on that stage. I'm conf confident like a motherfucker, right? We get on that stage. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was swole. I was like... And I remember. In your crab. I remember. I came we, I, from the airport. I drove Chris. We, we were somehow in the same car coming back from the airport to the hotel, and we we heard that you know uh, um, um, Ronnie is going to be two forty six. Oh, Chris said, "Oh, I'm gonna get him this time. I'm gonna get him this time." So we came, we came back, and the first call out, two guys. You yeah, remember that? Chris. It says Ronnie and Chris. I was like, yeah. "Oh, damn." Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> How am I going to right, fucking get in there? Yeah, and I told you what it was. You, you were too dangerous, okay? Yes, I, I think so, the same, Chris. You got lucky that day because they just did two yeah, call outs. Let me tell you. Let me, okay, let hold me on, hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> so, the, first time, let's so, mine so, all right. So, top two, they call out Chris and, uh, and Ronnie. I was like, wait a minute. I said, I'm waiting for my name to be called. Come on, got to call me. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> call me. It's so, like, fuck. That gives the judges a sign here, judge one and two. So now after that round, they call, they add me to the call out. So now I'm already in third. You know, I'm going to go catch up. You know, that was my experience. I was like, there I could have maybe possibly got you too. But hey. Okay, Chris, so, why you okay, so on, on the roll with Dennis and the Hungry Show? Bring up the 2005 Australian. Go on, bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Chris, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so. When it comes to, you know, competition, we all want to beat each other. We all have each other on our minds uh, leading up to the show a lot of times. Who's in the show, you know who's coming in, you know what they're about, and you know what probably what you need to exploit or what you need to try to attack or show them up on, something like that. So I remember, and, I, and then when I, when I heard this, I remember saying the same type of thing, and I remember it sparked something in Lee when I said some certain thing. So, you know, you know, you're going through the show and I'm like, okay, boom, boom, boom. I remember the music. I remember everything. I, 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 I was like, opposed to some, uh, uh, damn, what was that song? I said, was this back? It was that, who was that? Um, uh, anyway, not, not important. But- Julio Iglesias. Busta Rhymes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Eminem. It was Eminem. Okay. Right? So, post the Eminem came off. I'm like, okay, got De got the Dexter third. Then they're going for first and second. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to beat Dennis. I'm going to beat Dennis. Then he got me second. I was like, damn. I was just like, I was just like, oh, man. You, you're talking Hungary? That was the first time you beat me. Yeah. You really thought you were going to win in Hungary? I thought I was going to beat you, yeah. <laughs> Are you serious? But listen, but Dennis, you, you're looking into the mirror. The mirror sometimes tells you <laughs> what you want to hear. <laughs> you mirror. see what you want to see. Your mirror, yeah, you you see mirror, you, see. Your mirror lied. But the thing, here's, yeah. here's, here's another thing. So now I beat Chris in Hungary. Of course, I'm, I'm, this is my first pro win. So now we go into Australia. Now Christoph stepped up his game. He's like, nah, let that me, ain't happening. Let me, let me tell you, Dennis. <laughs> let me tell you. So I get on the bus, right? I'm kind of on the bus. I'm just dragging my ass. I'm like, fuck. I hear Dennis on the phone already because he got that fucking world phone shit. I ain't got that. <laughs> <laughs> He's big shit. He's like, hey, I got him. I got him, baby. Uh, you, know, you, you know, you know, no, you know who the first one I called? Milos. Yes, yes. Well, you called me on babe because I heard you say babe. No. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't call Milo. No, he's on the phone. I'm, I'm walking right past you when you're saying this. But no, yeah. I, but listen, but I didn't call and said I got him because I, I, that wasn't. I heard thing. something like that. I, I just, I no, I was just <laughs> ecstatic that I won my first pro show I, finally. I didn't take it personally. It's all, yeah. it's all fun and love and war. Yeah. We got to try to win. But you know what? We, you, we come you, here to lose. You know what Melvin told me? But you were pissed. I was pissed. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> but when you look at the pictures, do you, you, do you, I don't you, care. I don't like to lose. Your face was still like this here. You're, I don't like to lose. Hey, you should. I wasn't on my game. I wasn't on my game. I know. No, he wasn't. When we came to Australia, I wasn't on my game. A week, but, late, we, a week later, we arrived in Australia. I look at then his, I, his face. But I said, I get to Australia. I said, okay, look. I said, okay. 
Yeah, his I said, face okay. all I, was, <laughs> I did my Denzel. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's the same shit that I just okay. had in my bitch in, in Canada. I'm going to put right? cases on all you motherfuckers. Yeah, he showed that. He showed, listen, but I have no problem to sit here and, and even though I beat you one time, which don't mean nothing because you beat me every other... No, I beat you twice. But twice. I don't have a problem admitting that, you know, you were way superior bodybuilder than me. And I have no no problem saying that. That's absolutely... You know, yeah. you're one of the best out there ever. I mean, you know, your track record and your... your, your Thank your, you, brother. Your, your, Thank your, you, brother. Your, your placings speak for themselves. You know what I'm saying? You got yeah. shitload of pro wins. So I don't have no problem. But this is all fun and talk, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So when I got to Australia, I'm like, okay, get my shit, get my stuff ready. I was like, I'm tanning every day, cardio twice a day, training twice a day. You sound I'm like, like fuck this. I want to just go nuts. You sound like Flex the after show, the Iron like, Man. I was like, Dennis, I was like, Dennis still think he's gonna beat me, but he ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so we get on stage, me, you, and Dex. And I got the video of that show. It was, it was, it was pretty fun though. But uh, yeah, but you, you still look good the next week. But I, I improved that like a lot, a lot. Oh and yeah, then, uh, you had about fifteen got, pounds of water shot. in you at the yeah. Hungary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah let, was... let's let's face it, Chris. I mean, uh, you knew that you can get away with like eighty percent of Chris Cormier yes. and, and beat uh, most of us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is how it was. If you would be hundred percent, it would be different. So ninety-seven, I beat you in Canada, right? A week before Night of the Champions, I'm going to Night of the Champions. Ah, yeah, Chris is off. You know, no, no problem, right? And uh, I was at my best shape ever in uh, in uh, NOC, but you showed up. You know, so if you showed up, then the show is over. But it was many times, you know, that uh, as Dennis said, like cabin of flex, were you know, in, uh, tours, looking like an off-season guest posing shape, and that they kept placing where they don't supposed to, right? Mm. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's face it, you, you, you get that. So. I was uh, coaching Dennis at that time. I remember that phone call. I was with Enrico Pica. We were having a dinner, and uh, the, the whole family was there. And uh, when you called me that you, you won the Hungary, like we celebrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but but uh, you guys up on me. no, we celebrated the win, not beating you. Yeah, I know, said, bro. I know. So so, Chris, which one hurt you more, me beating you or Lee Priest beating you? Lee. Oh, you sound like Lee, Ronnie now. Lee Come on, you sound like Ronnie. Hey, you, you see how he's... Like Lee the Flea. <laughs> <laughs> is this... Is this... Is like, this I'm, is this because I'm white? Is this a white No, thing? it's because you're little. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. you're five four. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, little? Come on. Come on now. Come on. What do you mean? Hey, Lee. I knew he was going to do that. I knew going to pull how, his guns out. How, how big are your... <laughs> Lee, how big are your arms still now? Uh, the good one's still 21. Yeah. So how, what, 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 too, what, <laughs> what were your, what were your arms in the, at, at your biggest? Uh, when I was bulked up, the biggest they were were 24, but competing wise, they're always 21 and a half competing. Yeah. That's huge for your size, for your height. <laughs> I remember, you know, who, 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 this is how I found out about Lee Priest in the first time. Gary Stridham. Okay. Gary, I met Gary Stridham in Thailand, right? That was, we're talking back in 1993 or 94, where Gary Stridham was visiting Thailand and I found out I met him and I, you know, I brought him to my house. <laughs> and he told me that the, the most impressed he was with a bodybuilder. He said, Man, I said, Man, you know how Gary, man, I saw Lee Priest sitting at the damn thing eating and he couldn't even get the fork to his mouth. His arms were so fucking big. <laughs> Coming from Gary Stridham, I was like, Damn, that Lee. You know, because I only saw you from from pictures. I never met you by that time, and uh, you know, and he t he told me that the arms were fucking ridiculous. You know, I mean, yeah, that's what I used to eat with Gary at the firehouse, and I'd have to wait for Gary to come for breakfast because <laughs> remember Gary just lived he lived right the across the street. He lived right yeah. across the street. He say, "Okay, Lee, we'll be there at nine. and I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It's like, what's so long? I couldn't get a park. I'm like, so he'd leave ah. his penthouse. He'd take the <laughs> elevator down to the garage." drive his nice BMW or Mercedes out of the garage, come up Main Street, and then park it in front of the firehouse and have to wait. I'm like, why don't you just walk across the road? Oh, no, i got to drive. <laughs> like, yeah. You didn't he just was, uh, straight across the he road. He was literally across the street. Exactly, right across. Upstairs. <laughs> Lee, Quick, huh? Lee yeah, I, I want to ask you a question. Did you train the arms heavy? Yeah, always. 
the happiest day I ever curled was just over three plates at World Gym once. But I always put good arms from day one. Yeah, I've always had good arms. Yeah, like I said, I never trained forearms, but from day one, I always did volume. I never did, even at 13 years old, I never did less than 20 sets for biceps and triceps the whole time. I always did high volume all the time. High volume. Are you but, trembling uh, right now? What's that? Heavy weights? Yeah, heavy as I could go. Yeah, if I was curling dumbbells, I'd get up to the 100-pound dumbbells, curling them strict and that. Yeah, I never, never used sloppy form, but curling barbell, like I said, the heaviest was just three plates, but I'd stick around. You're talking, you talking three, three forty fives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you three fifteen. You you yeah. curling three fifteen? That's fucking superstar. <laughs> so when, when did you start? Yeah, I, was at, I was at World Gym just before the '97 Olympia. Joe Gold's watching me. Eddie Giuliani's there. Rest in peace, Eddie. And I'm I'm curling. I'm just strapping onto the bar. I got my wrist straps. I'm strapping on. Psyching up, thinking, come on, you can do at least six reps. And I'm just about to lift it. Eddie Giuliani walks over and puts his hand on my shoulder and goes, Lee, don't tear your bicep now. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, I was so I was so focused <laughs> on lifting the weight. Now he tells me not to tear my bicep. Now all I'm picturing is my bicep ripping off my fucking arm. I had to unstrap from the bar and regroup. I said, thanks, Eddie. That, that was motivation, but... Yeah, but always yeah, high, high, high volume though, all the time, high volume. Yeah, three fifteen. It's more, I mean, Dennis, you're super strong, right, uh, Chris? I could never three fifteen. I, I couldn't do it. It's uh, yeah, I, had, um, I was doing hey, I was doing three get, plates. I was curling three plates, but that was twenty fives. I'm trying to get the photos. <laughs> there used to be um. Remember Steve? Steve did a lot of the artwork for Joe. He used to work in the office there. He had long hair, looked like a Viking, really tall guy. I he actually took guy. photos. He took photos of it. And I'm still trying to track the photos down because he used to carry the photos in his gym bag everywhere and show people. So I'm trying to – he probably doesn't have them anymore because that's back in the day of actual photos. So they're probably deteriorated now. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, How about legs? Yeah. How about legs, Lee? Do you do have his legs? Heaviest I ever squatted was um, 775 pounds, but I always stayed because I trained with Tom a lot. So when I trained with Platts, we would go to just five plates, but sets of 20 reps. And then he would have you do the static holds. And then on the hack squat, would go maybe six, seven plates. And then it'd be like, now go halfway down and hold it. And as I'm holding it, he would start pulling down on it, just doing stupid, you know, Tom, he goes stupid shit. It's like, I'd be training with Tom, right? You know, you say go to failure. We're doing laterals. You know, you do your laterals. You get a bit tired. You get the hit and you stop. I mean, Tom, I'd go cold waiting because Tom would do, be doing his, he'd do it his. He'd get the hit and he'd still be going. Yeah. It's like 10 minutes later, I'm like, can I do a set now, Tom? But he's like, yeah, we'd just have you doing crazy shit like the negatives, the positives. Then he'd lift it up and you'd push down and you've got to resist against him. Like, when it comes to legs, I think Tom just came up with some of the craziest fucking ideas that, <laughs> You know, it's like I used to say to Tom, why don't you make a comeback? He's like, I can't leave because if I, if I turn it on again in my brain, he goes, I'll go crazy. He goes, I just go crazy when I get into that, you know, that mental side of training. So right. training with yeah. Tom was an eye opener. He was, like I said, really, I mean, like you see, you know, like, you know you'll see Branch and Ronnie had they like really hardcore and crazy, but Tom Platts just was like almost on another level again when it came to getting his mind into the training side of it. Uh, but Lee, when did when did you meet uh, when did you meet Dennis? When me? When the first time I met Lee? Yeah. Shit. Well, normally, normally people don't forget when they first meet me. They try to forget it, but they normally never do. No, I mean, <laughs> I, I think I think the first time I think the first time I talked to Lee, they had a conversation was at San Francisco. Really? I think it was at the airport we met Lee. Coming in. Okay. It was somewhere. I was, probably looking, I was probably looking for donuts or something. No, no, no. You were drinking your shake, your protein shake. And I remember I asked you, you still drink protein? I remember I asked you. You're giving away the secrets. You're giving away I remember secrets. Lee. I remember Lee and goals, but. Like what? I was, oh, wait a minute. I, was, uh, I read a story because you're bringing up human. I read a story. Chris come here and Lee at Firehouse. What, what went on at the Firehouse? <laughs> Chris, Chris, Chris wanted to beat me up and take my food. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're, we're lovers now, so we got over it. But no, what happened? Something, Chris. This is what happened. Something was said, and I said, I don't believe that. 
I said, that can't be true. So I asked Lonnie, I said, is this true what I heard about Chris? And then somehow it got back to Chris that I had said this. So I'm just sitting there one day eating at the firehouse. Chris is in the corner. And I, he looks at me. And I start eating. As I, as I go to take a bite of the pancakes, the plate goes right. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris is standing over me. You got shit to say, boy? I'm like, what? <laughs> you talking shit about me, boy? <laughs> I heard you talking shit about me. <laughs> you got it all wrong. <laughs> oh, so that was the famous uh, Venice uh, Firehouse story. <laughs> yeah, I said, I said I wasn't, you know, thinking oh, if he's going to punch me, he's going to punch me. I was more upset that he took my pancakes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the whole table, I'm hungry. The whole table disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where's all my friends gone? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys do you guys miss the firehouse and that and that and that, that 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 environment with Gold's Gym and going to the firehouse? Do you guys missed it? Yeah. I'll be back there soon. 27th, I'm going to be back in Venice. Oh, really? Yes, I'm getting on the 30th Memorial Day. I'm getting inducted into He's getting the made. Hall of Fame. He's getting made. You getting yeah. what? He's getting, getting made. He's gonna get made. Beach. Brought up in a, He's Venice, Beach. Up. Venice Beach yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah, got a plaque down on Venice Beach. Do you have one of them, Chris? Do you have one down? No. Nope. Oh, nope. oh. <laughs> let me ask you something else because you bring up Hall of Fame. Where did the fuck did that come from? Hall of Fame. How? How? How is that? You, is that something that did Sean Ray decided to made up a Hall of Fame and just no, call people no, Hall of Famers? On Venice Beach, I think they. I'm did not it. talking about that one, but there's another Hall oh, of Fame. Okay. Was supposedly oh, Sean Ray's in and 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 well, Flex well, Wheeler. If Sean's, and, in it, if Sean's in it, of course he made it up. If Chris, <laughs> Chris, is, Chris, are you in it? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I assume I'm a Hall of Famer. <laughs> like, God damn it. I assume. I, but, uh, I mean, I'm I'm a Hall of Fame to my old high school, Ponsby and I. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Indians there, but no, um, I mean uh, that. I mean that. I got yeah, the they said they were gonna induct me with the golden dumbbells, but I didn't get them yet, though. I always wondered, because you guys hear that, you know, because Sean Ray's mostly, when he did the interviews before, he said, he's a Hall, Hall of, of Famer, Famer, Hall of Famer. I was like, what Hall of Fame? Where I is it? How do we get in? How do we get in? What do we have to do? <laughs> I, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. I think there was originally from Weeder, uh, when Weeder was still uh, on, they were inducting like five kind of dropped the ball a yeah. year. First, yeah, five people a year. Seriously, okay. that's how it started. So what and happened to it? I do remember it? when, uh, yeah, there was five like uh, Arnold and uh, Franco and you know, and then Linda Murray and stuff like. It was like five people per per year, maybe right there around two thousands, you know. So yeah, it was uh, legitimate. Ask Jim Anion, he'll probably tell so you. So what happened to it, it though? What happened? Oh, it stopped. It stopped, yeah. Because yeah. Damn. Damn. Yeah, I know. Maybe <laughs> once, 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 Sean, once Sean put himself in it, that was it. He cut it off after that. <laughs> hey, come on, guys. I, I know that you all have a Sean Ray story, right? But you got to at least admit he was a great bodybuilder, right? He was. What I've is, always said that. I said, yeah. as a bodybuilder, can't fold him. I, I think he should have had at least an Olympia title and stuff. But I, I, but I, as, a I hum, as a human being, I'm like, hmm. I won't, I won't use the C word right now because I'm being polite. <laughs> As a bodybuilder, I, uh, absolutely. No, no I doubt. I was just telling him this the other day at the, in Pittsburgh. I said, you know, I always I throw shit at him. I probably wanted to kill him a couple of times or another or <laughs> periodically. Uh, but I said, everybody wanted to be in my era. People wanted to be him. Like I met him oh, yeah. when we were teenagers at the, uh, still in high school is when I met Sean. And, you know, we started to hang around each other as teenagers. So he was somebody I wanted to emulate. And everything he won, I wanted to win. You know, yeah, I cut I mean, my hair to a, to a flat top, everything. I wanted to be Sean Ray. Oh, Pose like him, everything. Yeah. But then I just like when, uh, you know, he was shorter. So he was able to, you know, accumulate this physique a lot faster than, than most of us. But, uh, yeah, I just like to have been. He always told me from the day I met him, you're never going to beat me. You're never gonna beat me. Don't even try, you know. So yeah, but then when I beat him, it was it was it was it was bittersweet. So he was like, I remember what I remember watching him on the VHS tapes here in Australia, and I think, and I I loved his posing routine. I can't remember which Olympia it was where he posed to a view to a kill, 
and then, you know, he came oh, out to sure. turn around and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I said, as a bodybuilder, he's one of the greatest out there, you know, for what he did and that. So, yeah, yeah, you can never fault him on his bodybuilding, that's for sure. But you can fault him on going to eat and he never paying and all that other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's that one? You're going to love me? That, that you're going to love me pose routine? Oh, yeah. yeah in 87, the Nationals? Oh, oh Jennifer, no one, Jennifer, that, that Jennifer Holiday. Jennifer Holiday. Yeah. yeah. No one can pose yeah. to that song after that. Like, you just won't, it won't even look right. Yeah. No, he killed it. That that was yeah. That was one I was very impressed with. That man, that bring tears to your eyes watching that one. Yeah. That was just beautiful, man. It's crazy. Sean Ray today. Okay. Sean Ray at his best today. Where would he place? He'd be up there. Still. I think he'd, he'd still be in there. He'd be in there still. Easy. He'd still be in there. With the with uh, the quality with the quality, have, with the quality he, he had. He could possibly win it. I was just you about know? to say with the quality that yeah. he had with the side the mm -hmm. and all yeah. that. You don't think that he could. Sneak in there? No, Serratus, yeah. I mean, I would like to see it because I know it's a, a big discussion of, like, how people look then and now is different, blah, 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 blah. But, oh, yeah, don't clear start cut. that again, Chris. Don't start clear, that again. Know, we got to see know, the comments. You fucking I'm saying he had clear cut, cut muscle. <laughs> I'm just saying he had clear cut muscle. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, it is what it is. But, yeah, he, he's a solid competitor no matter what. No matter what stage you put him on, he's going to be solid. Mm-hmm. Milos, when you look at your long career, 72 pro shows, if yeah. you had to pick one show where you say you looked at your absolute best, no matter where you placed, what show would you say? Yeah, 97 out of the champions with Chris beat me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was your best? That damn, I, Chris. I, I, I thought that was my best, yeah. You know, that was uh, <laughs> just the right combination of everything, right? And listen, I mean, uh, Chris, maybe you don't know. <laughs> But uh, I, I remember uh, I Steve know. Weinberger, you know, telling me right after, uh, right after Night of Champions, there was USA, and he came up to me and said, "Listen, there was super close between you and, and Chris, front and side. See, you know, he still beats you from the back, and uh, you know, I agree, of course." Milos, you, Milos, you don't think Chris beat you because of his name? You diet down, train hard. And supplement smart for months. When the time comes to step on stage, don't leave your tan to chance. Go with the pros. Pro Tan. Number one worldwide since 1987 and the official sponsor of the Olympia for the last 15 years. Don't step on stage without it. Pro Tan. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Listen. Uh, I'm I'm very realistic, right? I'm just a uh, uh, little bit uh, ahead to say that everybody at any given day can beat that. I mean, I think that Lee Priest at his best. Uh, Lee Priest at his best. You know, some Olympia lineup, he could possibly not just be top three. He could arguably win. I mean, there were some pictures of, uh, I'm sure you guys all know that, when, when Lee was at his absolute best, now I don't remember which show. Lee, what was, what was your best? What was your absolute best? When he beat me? Like some, yeah, yeah, some say the 05 Australia, and some say the 2002, but then some say 97 at the Olympia there and the Ironman. Nah. All right, tell me uh, what you, the, tell the me 90, what you think. The, 90, the 97 Ironman was funny when I got second to Flex because Sean was helping Flex backstage, and Sean comes over, and he says to me, go, 97. 97 at the Ironman. So Sean comes over, he goes, you're looking great, Lee. He goes, I think you might, it's going to be close between you and my boy Flex. And Flex heard him say that. So Flex comes walking over and goes, yeah, I'll give you credit. You're looking good, but you're not going to beat me because of who I am. And then he walked off. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, he said that. He said that to you. Yeah, he said that to me. He goes, you're not going to beat me because of who I am. Then he just walked off. <laughs> Yeah, Lee, do you think you could have won Olympia? And I was always a realist, you know, when it came to the Olympias. To me, because, you know, being shorter and everyone being much heavier than me, every time, like, I do those um, Mitsuru videos, you'd always hear me. I'm like, shh, don't talk to me, Mitsu. I'm training for eighth place. And Kevin one time's like, Lee, how do you think you're going to do? I said, oh, I'm happy to get 10th. And Kevin just goes off. What do you mean 10th place? This is war. you got to think positive. I said, Kevin, I'm a realistic. I said, look. If I get 10th, that's when if you made top 10, it qualified you for next year. So I was happy. So 
you know, the year I got fifth and then they changed the placings after the show and Delette had Demilia by the throat on the Queen Mary about to kill him because Paul went from fourth to fifth and Kevin oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to fourth. He had the I said, Paul, I said, Paul, I, I stirred Paul up. I said, Paul, because I was on the bus going there and people go, Lee, sorry about your placing. I'm like, what do you mean? I got fifth in my first Olympia. They're like, oh, you haven't heard they changed it? I said, they did. So when I saw Paul, I said, Paul, you know they changed the placings? You just lost 20 grand going from fourth to fifth. Paul's like, Where's Wayne? And he sees Wayne. Next thing, he's got Wayne up against the wall by how, the neck. How did, What's this bullshit about the dude, How, how did had, that happen, though? Bro, he had a uh, bottle in his hand, ready to hit him with it at the table. <laughs> he was standing over him. I was right there. And did you see the picture I put up on Instagram? So they two, changed two they changed ago. the results the day after the show? No, the, the evening oh, after. Once we right? left the venue, once we left the venue, they yeah, changed that. But after, after the show? After yeah. the show. Oh, that's crazy. I, I still, got the, I still got the certificate saying fifth place and that. Then I think I got a couple more six. Yeah, but as I was saying, if I was to get in the top ten, I was happy. So if I ever got when I got eighth, when I got six a couple of times and fifth, to me that's as good as a win because you know I knew I was never going to realistically win it. So I was just happy to be on the stage there and get those placings. So you know, when people say to me, oh, "What have you ever done in bodybuilding? You've never won an Olympia yet?" Shit, I said, "Well, I stood on the stage and I did." pretty well i said i knew i wasn't going to win so people think you know these trolls when they think they're hurting you saying you never won the olympia i'm like i know and? i know yeah, and? yeah. <laughs> it's like this this there's, there's, there's thousands of bodybuilders that never won the olympia so this i get the but same then, shit sometimes then, from, like for I, me like i see them though dennis when i look at their profile <laughs> picture i feel sorry for them because once they've abused me i go look at their photos and i write them a nice letter back Yes, I can see you're angry. I can see that you're going through chemo right now. So, you know, don't hate the world. Just be at peace. Yeah. That sort of thing. Because some of them, it's just like, come on. It's like when you see their pictures. And that's another thing. Do you get that? Like I said, we love bodybuilding. I'm sure we love other sports. But why? I'm, I'm sure other sports get it too. But I've never understood the mentality of the trolls where they'll attack Chris or Milos or me or you, Dennis. And I'm thinking, why do you even follow me? It's like, I don't really like tennis. I I respect them. I might watch the Wimbledon final, but I'd never go on Federer's page and go, Federer, you fucking suck. Your backhand's the worst fucking backhand ever. You can't hit a fucking ball. And just to sit there every day riding shit to someone that you don't like, I don't get that mentality. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, they have nothing better to do than to hate, you know. But, you know, that's a sign of you doing something right because if you have no haters, that means you have no success. You know, well, so. I've always got haters, Dennis. Don't you? Worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Ch changing the scores, uh, uh, Chris. You remember '98 uh, Germany? You know they they called you fifth, and it's like, oh yeah, great. So I beat Chris, right? And they go <laughs> and you you like old test and all this stuff. They say, oh, hold on, it's a mistake. <laughs> and they called me fifth. You don't remember? And that was like. One of those moments, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chris, Chris, was, Chris was probably standing there going, you're damn right, there's a mistake. <laughs> so, so, but now, Lee, so now we heard what people think your best was, but what do you personally think was your best look ever? Every time I get asked this question, I don't really know. Probably, you don't know. No. But even people have said when I made the comeback at 42 for the universe in 2013 even though it's not an ifbb show they say my conditioning there because i went back to naba and other guys were bigger i figured fuck i've got to come in no man I, I think i think probably oh five i think all right you, tell uh, me this tell me this Lee. well chris chris is saying oh five at australia when i beat him so he has to say that that was my yeah. best ever because that's <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so he so he can you go said to that was your 100 that was my 80 you said that was my 80 percent <laughs> So, but tell me, <laughs> Lee, no, tell you, me, you, tell you me. You were seventy nine percent that day, Chris. You were just fucking a little bit too off. <laughs> Lee, tell me what happened back in two thousand three, man. What happened oh, well, when you step you know, on that stage like, with, in the, with the mullet? You like that look? It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> but the thing was, John Davies from Australia never got over that because me at my worst, I still beat John Davies from Australia. So. <laughs> <laughs> And again, I looked at Kevin at that show. Kevin looked just as bad as me. And he got sick. Come on. Hey, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that show was. Take this out. Take this out. Remember, you went on the tour and you had the mullet and yeah. you just said, fuck it, and started eating every damn thing. Oh, remember yeah. on the tour? You just yeah, that's when, um, 
Well, the Vince Taylor Dillette and I think by the time we got to Prague, we found a Chinese shop, we found the fucking Hungry Jack, so we just started eating because I was getting third, Paul would get fourth, then I'd get third, he would get fourth, and then we just said, fuck this, and we're eating, and then <laughs> we went to go to that Uncle Sam's clothing thing, Yeah. and Paul and I are in the restaurant, and Paul said, son, we're not going. I said, we're not going. He goes, fuck it. He goes, Wayne's getting paid for this shit. We're not, not going. So we're sitting there, NASA comes <laughs> running up. You two got to come down. Wayne said, get on the bus. Paul's like, you tell Wayne, Lee and I aren't coming. And from that point on, our place, he just went, Brah! Yeah, Wayne Wayne was doing some some shady shit back then, man, if you think yeah, about back it. To, back to 2003, I didn't want to do the Olympia. You know, when you're in that, if you're not 100%, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. I died for a week, McDonald's for a week. Died for a week, McDonald's. So I put online, look, I told no fans. I think I was on Get Big at the time. That was the main site. I'm sorry, look, I'm just not in it. I'm going to beat the expo. I'll meet you, Zore. I got abuse. How can you do this to us? We're coming to see you. You better be on stage. I'm like, well, fuck, I better do it for the fans. So I did it. Went on stage, competed. Go on, get big the next day. How could you go on stage looking like that, letting us down? You let us... (laughs) I, I I just brought it up because I just not just not too long ago watched the uh, the press conference when oh, uh, when there was this, all the, when all this talk was going around about you know the athletes blah 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 and and you and you said something to to Wayne Demilia about you know yeah there's people they're not getting any money and you wanted to donate your money your prize money if yeah. you make it and then he said something to you where you put it in writing and you pulled this piece of paper out of your pocket yeah. I got it <laughs> then, yeah there it is. <laughs> yeah. That was, that hey, you, was... You, you guys. You talk about '97, right? No, '97, Chris and, and Lee, because I was there. Uh, Hungary, we went to Spain and then England, right? And yeah, at, uh, England, England show, uh, uh, you beat the Nasser at that show, uh, Chris, right? Because yeah. the first show, uh, this is how people to understand how competitive that was. I beat you in the Hungary '97 first show, yeah. Yeah, so when you look at it, then we went to Spain and you were like top three or four, and then you you beat the, you were like second at the uh, uh, English show already. You were you were like uh, uh, beating right. Nasser and Nasser after '97 Olympia, where he could arguably beat uh, Dorian Yates, right? But '97 after Lee, I remember watching you eating a goddamn cheesecake and everything in the England already. It's like oh good, you know. So now Lee is gonna sleep. And uh, Lee starts slipping. So by the time we came to the Russia, uh, Lee, you were number one and I was number two. And the Death European Tour, we had the same numbers all the way through. Yeah. We, uh, I was going, uh, you were number one, I was number two, uh, Nasser was number three. And you were telling me, like, because you were so out of shape and fucking yeah. the jiggly butt. <laughs> as, you know, so. <laughs> I even, and listen, well, that's, that's what I love about Lee. So I said, look. They're going to call me with these Russians, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, indeed, they call him with the Russians. And he goes there, you know, turn around and, and uh, look. And he did that stomp, you know, from behind, like, a, you know, showing a calf. And ass was all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, too. Before, before, before the show, I said to Wayne, I said, Wayne, look, I've gone off the rails. I've eaten a lot. I said, I don't feel good. <laughs> don't even call me out, I said. Just let me stand on stage. Don't call me out. The very last call out, Lee Priest and those two Russians. And these Russians were wearing, like, Speedo swimming trunks. They look like they weren't even bodybuilders. And he puts me in the middle. I just look at Wayne. I'm like, you fucking asshole. <laughs> hey, let, let me tell you about the Lee, because you guys didn't know Lee since I, I met him in 89, right? And already, I mean, he was a teenager fucking freak. I mean, okay. then... Fast forward to 93, uh, Niagara Falls. That was his mm-hmm. pro debut. You see, the way I saw you, Lee, like back in the day, like when you see you in your clothes, I said, you know, he looks narrow, right? You know, shit. So I didn't really realize. But then I see him on the stage somehow. I mean, shoulders look like that. But then he opens up. He's like, wait a minute. You know, the last spread, right? Like, where is this fucking coming from? But Niagara Falls, we had a actually... You could do the cable push down. Usually mm-hmm. we don't have anything to, to pump up backstage, but for whatever reason, I did this scene with that, and then we're gonna come out of my head. I seen you doing these push downs and a little kid that I just saw in a in a Tucson, I mean with arms bigger than my legs. Jesus. And they placed you, I think, seventh. But I, yeah. I watched I have that videotape. It's like, oh my God, if you were 
already known at that time you could be easily top three in your pro debut. Yeah. I remember I remember you posted that video of, of my posing. Yeah. I've never seen it before, yeah. How old were yeah, you when you did your first pro show, Lee? Uh twenty. Twenty years old. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was so, already mad. I'd won my I won my first free shows when I was thirteen years old, so it was like So you competed real early. I was a veteran by the time I was 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you turn pro? In Australia? No, I actually... No, won America. America, oh, America because I won, I won my Mr. Australia when I was 17. And Paul Graham and them said I was too young to turn pro. So I won again when I was 18. They still wouldn't let me turn pro. I won the Australia again at 19. I said, well, fuck, I'm not going back again. So Lou Zwick flew me over to do the Niagara Amateur. And I just so happened to be in the gym and Jim Mannion was in the gym and he heard I was doing the Niagara Amateur. He's like, well, what have you done? I said, well, I've won my national title three times. He goes, why haven't you got a pro card? I said, they said I was too young. So I think Jim called Wayne and Wayne got a hold of Paul Graham in Australia and they gave me my pro card then. So I, instead of doing the amateur, I went straight into, into the pro side. Why wouldn't Graham give you the pro card if you win the, 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 the show? He said I was too young. Said I was too young, and the thing is, too, in Australia back then, there's, yeah, there's a lot of politics. But it's like if you were a good Australian bodybuilder, it's like they didn't want to let you go because if you turn pro and you go over there, then it was like yeah. they didn't have many people back then because you know Australia's population was like I think we're only at 26 million in the whole of Australia now. So I was like yeah. back then it was like you know when it came to bodybuilding, there wasn't a lot around. So yeah, I finally got it, and then the following year when I was 21, I qualified for my first Olympia. And there was a Houston pro show on. I did like the Iron Man, the Arnold, and the, the San Fran. But then there was a Houston show a couple of months later. Because I did well in the first couple, I said, fuck, I've qualified for the Olympia. I'll be one of the youngest ever. So I went to see Joe and said, Joe, look, I know I've signed the contract for the Houston pro. Can I sit it out because I want to look my best for Olympia? Joe's like, surely you don't do it, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't go. Next time I get a call from Wayne. And I actually, someone sent me, Wayne was pissed you weren't there. I said, but Joe said I didn't have to go. Wayne calls me up. I run these fucking shows, not Joe Wheeler. You're suspended. So I got suspended that year. I think like in 93 was my first pro show. And at the end of 93 or 94, Muscle Mag comes out. Lee Priest banned. I'm like, well, fuck, that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> <laughs> and I got many more. I got many more after that. <laughs> I, you know what a funny story that I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, about Lee. I don't know. I think you were one of the first guys to sign with Muscle Tech. Yeah, yeah. And then I remember it was, I don't know, was it at, was it at the Arnold Expo or is it Arnold Feeble? Because it, for whatever, it was a real short one. And I remember you you literally went online and, 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 and drank something, some other shake. I oh, yeah, I remember that. Drink a different that. shake and tell basically tell people this is what I drink or something just to get out of the contract with Muscle Tech. Yeah, because yeah, I had a free deal with him and it was a pretty good deal. But after eight months, I'm like, this product is fucking shit. <laughs> and they got me saying, they got me saying, Lee Priest says this is the best ever. I said, you can't say that. We're paying. I said, I don't give a fuck if you're paying me. That's fucking bullshit. I said, I want out. They're like, we'll take you to court. I said, take me to fucking court. I'll say it shit. Now, as soon as I got out of it, text is like, you're fucking crazy, man. You're crazy. I, how, can I, how can I get out of mine? How can I get out of so, mine? So you literally just be, did, did it because you didn't like the product? Yeah, hated it. And then they would, and what I hated was they'd bring out like, I think when a hydroxy cup come out and they said that was how I got in my best shape ever used. I said, I never used the product once. I said, I went somewhere and they're like, Lee, I think, was it when the cell tech came out? And I was doing a seminar. Lee, what's that new Celtec product like? I'm like, what are you talking about? The Celtec product in the ad form. So I get a hold of myself. I said, what's this fucking new product? Is it, oh, you're in the ad. I said, well, how about you send me the product first so I can fucking try it and I know that I'm in the ad. So when somebody fucking asks me, I know what I'm talking about. And then we'd do the photo shoots with Irvin Gelb. Remember they had the protein bars and all this? Every photo shoot, they had like eight different flavored protein bars, the Celtec, the hydroxy cut the pre-workouts, every workout, you had to take a photo sitting in the gym, reading the label. Now pretend you're scooping it out. Now pretend you're drinking it <laughs> and now eat this bar. I said, every photo shoot's the same. I said, why am I still reading the label? I said, it's been eight months I've been with you. I should know what's fucking in it. Why I keep reading the label for in these photo shoots type thing. And 
It's like it says, take 30 minutes before you work out. Why am I drinking it in the gym? I would have already fucking drunk it before I got here, wouldn't I? So it's like I just started arguing. Even Irvin Gell paid it because in his contract, Muscle Tech told him the photo shoots had to be like six hours long. But we were finished after three hours. And one time we finished and left, they caught him up and they ripped into him. You should be there shooting still. Go back and do more photos. It was like, but we've got everything. So what, what do you want us to do? I just didn't like the way they were. Like I said, I'll, I'll stand behind the product. Even if someone's not paying me, I'll say this is a good product. But right. if you're paying me and it's a shit product, I said, look, I don't care what you pay me. If I'm telling my fans to spend their hard-earned money and it's shit, I'm not going to do that. I don't yeah. give a fuck. I think so the, the fans even, love even you when for I got this. suspended. I think at my peak, I was making like with the contracts and then MD, I was getting like 6000 a month. I was making about eighteen grand a month at my peak. But then when I got suspended and lost contracts, I went down to 4000 a month. And people are like, oh, my God, fuck, Lee, how are you going to survive? I said, look, even at 4000 I can still train. i got a roof over my head. i got food on the table. Something else will come along. And it did. So, you know, the money thing wasn't a thing. It was nice to have the money. But so you, you always came across as somebody who don't give a fuck about the money, you know. <laughs> I never did. No, For real. Never For did. real. It's like even like guest posings, promoters would call me up. Ed Connors would get mad. Lee, you could be busy every weekend. You could be guest posing. I said, Ed, but... Yes, I could be making the money, but it doesn't make me happy. Traveling stressed me out, having to go on stage. I said, I just don't like that. So when promoters call me up, I'll be like, hello? Yeah, could you guess post? I'll be like, let me just check my diary. I'll be like. <laughs> you were probably too fat I'm at busy, that time. I'm, I'm, busy that, I'm busy that weekend. I'll just stay home and watch NASCAR on TV or something. <laughs> I just didn't want to fucking. At, at one point, I remember, at one point, almost everybody in the whole lineup was signed with Muscle Tech. Yeah, I guess we all. Uh, Milos, were you at Muscle Tech at one point? No, never, never, never. never. But Chris was. I remember Chris signed the contract right off the fucking was it GNC show? I remember two thousand. Uh, was it yeah, two thousand? Was it two thousand or two thousand one? What what show 2000. was it? Two thousand. You just signed the deal and you fucking bragging about it. And I'm like, oh, he's so lucky. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know why? <laughs> Because I played it so cold. I played it so cold, and and I'm one of the first guys who even, like, went at him like that because they were like, okay, Chris, we're not gonna, we want you to sign, but uh, we don't sign people over 80,000. But Dex was already with him. I said, well, call me when you get, call me when you get over that number. Call me when you get to 80, yeah? <laughs> yeah, they were, and this is around Christmas. They're like, I'm sitting back. They call me the next week. Uh, Chris, we are willing to go up, uh, go up to 100. Um, but we, we usually give guys, uh, I don't know if it's half or, or, or when they win a competition and give you a, a certain percentage, whether it was half or, mm -hmm. or the full thing, they were doing that for all the athletes, but we're not going to do that for you. I'm like, really? And I, like, why is that? So only oh, cause you was, you was average at the time I was averaging like three wins a year at least. Yeah. And I said, well, we didn't want to give you that type of money. So I said, okay, well. I want first class seats then wherever I fly. And then it was like, okay, let's get back to you. Came back, I got that. And then I got, I was like, okay. <clears throat> and we're only gonna give you gonna give you two years. I was like, well, double that, you got a deal. Give me like a four-year deal. So I was like, <clears throat> so they come back just around Christmas time. They say, okay, we're gonna get a four-year deal. Boom, boom, boom. And then I'm like, I was like, I'm going to the, uh, I'm going to the uh, shows, and I'm like, I want to, and even I got those protein mixers, and they're making the protein. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, uh, send me one of those to my house too. I want that mixer. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the dispenser? Give me a dispenser, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm doing, I'm, make, I'm mixing cocktails. In it. <laughs> for, for me, for me, it was right after the 2003 Olympia. I mean, literally, I was on the way to the. No, I was on my way back to to, uh, I don't know, I think, uh, I don't even know, California. And uh, I'm, I'm leaving the, the reception and somebody runs after me, but I don't remember this guy's name. And he's like, yeah, we want to we sign you. And I signed a deal with, with uh, Muscle Tech right after the Olympia 2003. It was a nice little three-year deal. Yeah. And then, uh, what, February 2004, that shit happened in Thailand where they had fucking arrested me and immediately terminated my contract before they even knew what was really going on. Term terminated the contract. So that was done. So after like two years later, three years later, when all that shit was done, 
they trying to come back, and they probably thought that, yeah, he's broke now, you know. They offered me half of what they gave me before. I was like, no, nah, fuck y'all. <laughs> the, the, thing that, the thing that put a bad taste in my mouth with them was, too, was I'd been with ProLab, and ProLab had always been good to me because I signed with them in the beginning, and as the company grew, they kept increasing my contract. But then Natrol, this other supplement company, brought them out. So it was around 2001-ish, midway through the year when Muscle Tech approached me, and I said, well, this is what I was getting. And Muscle Tech said, well, we can't afford that because we're not really signing people right now, but we'll sign you for this amount. I think, well, that will get me by. But they said, when it comes time near the end of the year when we renew contracts and you do well, we'll up your contract. So came time to actually sign the new one. And then I won the scene free and I said, well, how about you said you were going to give me more? You know, if I did well and you said now it's time to renew it, you'd give me more. And I remember the guy to this day, he goes, do you have that in writing? I said, uh, you gave me your word. I said, you told me on the phone. And as soon as he said that, because I'm, I'm old-fashioned still, it's like, you can have something in writing, but look, if you give me your word and shake my hand, I'm going to take that over a signature any day, you know? So as soon as he said that, you have that in writing, I went, okay, so that's how you're going to fucking play it, is it? So from that point on, I said, I'm getting out of this deal altogether. So. Yeah. <laughs> but then, Dennis, to, to, to understand the magnitude, like, like the people listen to this on, on the podcast, to be with those guys, and you're going to be all throughout the magazine. You're going to be about mm -hmm. four or five pages in the front, four or five pages in the back, every magazine that they had um, ad space in. Mm -hmm. And also, I was with Chic, so I was wearing my Chic stuff and all the things. I, I signed with Chic and Muscle Tech at the same time, so I was doing that. So Chic was getting free press throughout this whole time, and then later on, two or three years down into the, the contract, they started blacking out Chic. Black and I but I put cheek on the map. Two thousand yeah. man, go back and check it out. You guys remember the time when uh, when uh, when we were with Weida and Weida still had the supplements, the ABB, the American Bodybuilding, and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. you oh, yeah. know. See, I I was living in Thailand at that time, and I remember one year Joe asked the 90s. me. One year Joe asked me like, "Oh, you don't like my products?" Because I never ordered. <laughs> you know, so now I had to order, but I couldn't get it into Thailand. So I ordered it and sent it all to Milos's gym, and Milos was selling that shit in the gym like it was I got, yesterday. I, was gonna, I just got to, I just got to say to Chris, I was going to say to Chris, then how many pallets of those drinks did you order, Chris, and sell them on the side? Because <laughs> Milos had Milos had a whole supplement store in the gym. I mean, it was loaded. <laughs> loaded. That, that's that's super interesting. Right now, I'm with the JYM company, and this this Andrich is now. You know, uh, my partner here, and he used to be with Wither. So at uh, uh, 99, I think, which year was, there was a Wither meeting in Salt Lake City. And now they're reading uh, how many supplements everybody's ordering, right? And it was, here's the Sean Ray never ordered. I was there. <laughs> yeah, right? And yeah. then here's the meals that ordered 5,000 something, you know, pieces. But this is how it was. Remember, you get the sheet. With the order, you can do mm -hmm. one bottle or one case. Or mm -hmm. okay, I'm gonna put six or, or one pallet. I'm gonna just put <laughs> six cases of everything, right? Uh -huh. They came, you know, with a trailer. If I can, they yeah. put it right in front of my gym. Like, oh my god, this is like twenty thousand dollars worth of supplements. Like, oh shit, next month. Let me repeat the order. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying right. this for a whole year. They didn't, they didn't cut up to it, you know? Yeah. I said, well, okay, okay. I'm going to play stupid. Oh, oh. Hey, do you remember they started putting on? Not the case. Hey, they, they, they didn't get it. Uh, so, yeah. And then I added uh, Dennis's on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> remember, all, did you get those? Did you get all those protein drinks, the blue lightning protein drinks? I used to get cases and cases. Yeah. But then when I was dieting for the show... They used to have those tiger bars, those tiger protein bars, and I used to order boxes and boxes of these chocolate protein bars. And just then, my neighbour knew I had law, so he used to like train people and do diets for people. So he'd be selling, I'd sell them to him, then he'd sell them to his clients. And <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> I start putting on deal, a bottle, right? not for not for resale. Not for resale. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. For yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's right. but listen uh, now when I'm thinking about uh, uh, Lee. Who had the more problems with the IBB, you or, or me? <laughs> oh, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. That's another thing. Yeah, who who is who I is? Think, I think I think I got the most fines and suspensions, but you're pretty outspoken as well. But yeah, I got the suspension also for three years. Yeah. So oh, Lee, my, Lee, are you still officially suspended? Who me? Lee. Well, well, Bob, 
Bob Chicarello, the athlete's rep, says, I'm not. That was all made up. But if we go technically, yes, I was. But now, of course, the IFBB and them have gone different ways. The new organization I'm technically not suspended from, but the old one. What's the new organization? What do you, oh, you mean Jim Mannion? Remember how they split from Raphael and they became the IFBB and the... On the IFBB MMA. Pro League. So now are you in good standing with the Pro League? Because if you want to do the Masters Olympia, you need to be in good standing. I know, but you know, all I, I, see the thing is I never had a problem with Jim. My problem was with the rules and that, because when I first got suspended the first time was when I... Well, not um, probably the fourth time is when I did the PDI. And everyone's like, look at Lee sticking it to the IFBB. I said, look, I'm not. I said, look, Wayne started a new organization. He's going to judge a different way. I'm in shape. It's two weeks before the Olympia. Why can't I do it? When you say because Wayne, you're talking about Wayne D'Amelio? Yeah, when he started the PDI, remember? So you, No, I don't remember. So you competed yeah, for not. Wayne afterwards? After you oh, were, yeah. Yeah, I did the PDI. I did. The, I won the New York show and then the English show. That was in New York, like, right? Oh, now yeah. I remember. And then you did NABA. You just went around like a hoe. Well, after all, well, I had no choice. Oh, after, no, no. Wayne, <laughs> after Wayne's show, they suspended me for one year. And they said, oh, we see you going to England. Don't go. We'll only make it one year. I said, look, I have to go. They've sold tickets. I'm on the poster. I have to go. I said, just make it two years suspension. They're like, okay. So when I got suspended for the two years, I came back. And they're like, well, Lee, it's two years. I said, look, let me get this straight. I'm a bodybuilder. I compete. That's what I do to make a living. You don't have any shows on. I pay to be with you. You don't pay me to be a member. So I started arguing. They said, well, you broke a rule. I said, well, look, I can go through the rule book. And I printed it out, being an asshole, and started underlining shit. Well, this rule's been broken by him. What did he get? Nothing. And they said, oh, you want to argue the point? You're suspended for life. So, I got, I got, so was 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 Wayne Demilio still doing the same say, shady shit with the prize money at the with this other federation? No, no, he actually paid. Was that was up. that the same with you guys in the early nineties? That when you go on a tour, that you have to wait for your prize money up to three months? Yeah, yeah you get the end, no, end, not end. me. <laughs> I got paid quick. You really? I needed that shit. Most of the hey. guys, <laughs> said, most of the guy had to wait three months, and every time I called Wayne, I said, "Wait, I still have my prize money." He said, "Yeah, the promoter hasn't paid yet." And then talk to the promoter, and the promoter says, I had to pay the price money before the show. So exactly. Wade yeah, always had to I was always getting mine. I had a issue, right? And, and uh, listen, I'm actually good with Wayne uh, <laughs> now, and, and, and I like the guy. But back in the day, uh, we had a, a several, you know, a fight. <laughs> this is how it was. He would, like you said, Dennis, he would go to all the promoters in six different countries and get the money up front, you know, mm -hmm. for the flight, for the per diem, hotel, and all this shit. Right. And then, of course, he quoted everybody much more money than, than it is, right? And then he would get us the cheapest goddamn flights, and usually <laughs> it was like a Lufthansa, right? So now, Aeroflot. Maybe so, Aeroflot, the Russian Yeah, Aeroflot. Aeroflot was there. We were going to, to, to Russia <laughs> well, at the end. You yeah. remember that? There, was, there were flies in the fucking... Uh, Dude, and I people, and people, I was just and about people to say that. Standing up. There was people a fly in the damn up. airline. Yeah. And people were stood up. Yeah, during during takeoff and landing, people were fucking standing up. They didn't even fucking stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, there were extra surfing. chairs that you know, like you can bring on a, on a patio, right? Oh, damn. You open up and you can. You old can ass, old ass airplane. Airplane. But but listen, for for uh, uh, that year, '97 also. So we would go, if you remember, from England uh, to Czech Republic, and then we go to Finland, and then we go to uh, 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 Russia. We had to go. From England back to Germany, and then Germany to Czech Republic. From Czech Republic back to Germany, Germany, you know, to uh, uh, Finland. I said, this doesn't fucking make sense. You know, so I went to uh, to Wayne and said, Wayne, you know, why other guys can take a one-hour flight and go from England, you know, straight to Czech Republic, and we are spending a whole fucking day, right? We are dieted down. We are dehydrated. We don't. We want our fucking rest. I mean, respect us as the competitors. And oh. This conversation is over, right? <laughs> that's, that's where my place took went a few places down. Remember, remember yeah. we got remember we got stuck in it was at one of the airports, there was that seven hour delay. We got yeah. stuck in one yeah. of the airports. And then it was not well, I think it's just after you had that argument, I went up to Wayne. We went to Russia after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone listen. was outside waiting for us. We yeah, were waiting, we went, were went, late for us to Spain. Wayne. I went to Wayne and I said, Wayne, a lot of the guys aren't happy with, you know, the way this is run. And this is exact words to me at the time. I said, you know, you got us on these flights because I heard, I said words with him. I said, you yeah, look, 
the guys aren't happy. This is what Wayne says to me. Look, Lee, I know you guys are dieting hard. I understand. He goes, I just brought a new leather couch and I even ha haven't had a chance to sit on it back at home. I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck you sitting on a new leather couch got to do with what the fuck we're going through? And I remember that when we got that seven hour delay, we couldn't find Kevin. And Wayne's like, Lee, go find Kevin. And so I go down to the fucking men's toilets because, uh, as Chris said, we, as soon as we landed, we had to get on the bus and go straight to the venue. The crowd had to wait all this time. I think the show finished at like 2 in the morning. We got to the hotel to get up again at 5. But when I found Kevin, Kevin's down there in the toilets at the airport putting fucking tan on. Just the average people are looking at Kevin like, <laughs> what the fuck this guy doing? Painting tan on himself in the bathroom at an airport toilet. <laughs> but, but that was going from Spain. I mean, from Hungary to Spain. But we have to stop by Germany. And then we yeah. missed the flight at seven hour fucking delayed. So show was supposed to start like at seven. They were all, audience was there waiting. And we arrived in uh, Madrid like at 10 o'clock p.m. Like yeah. I said, it was, uh, and not just that. Kevin was putting a collar. I didn't fucking put the collar. I looked like a fucking white ghost. <laughs> Because there was no time, right? No time. Remember, remember we went straight on the stage, the... right? Yeah. yeah. No yeah. pump, remember... no nothing. Just put on your trunks and go out there. We got time. And that was funny because at towards the end we all just started eating loose, but Ronnie was getting strict. You remember in Hungary they give us those boiled eggs and shit, and Ronnie took it all. And on the plane he opened up this container and <laughs> fuck did it stink? I think I think Ronnie got in shape because he got food poisoning because that last show that he won in Russia. I remember Kevin went down the back of the bus and he was fucking sulking. Kevin goes, oh, I, I didn't care that Ronnie beat me. I'm like, bullshit, you sat down the back of the bus like a little kid just lost his toy. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie won that Russian show and Kevin couldn't believe that Ronnie beat him. He's like, no, I was happy for Ronnie. I said, bullshit, you sat down the back of the bus like this. Like, how did you know, I lose? You know that story also that uh, uh, Russian judges gave it to Ronnie? That Twain wanted to change it for Kevin, and I did not allow it. Really? Yeah. Do you remember when we got on? Do you remember when we got on the bus from Russia? Remember, because the guards come. It's like we didn't even have to go through customs. The guys with the machine guns were there. I remember we got on the bus, and I think we were talking about we wanted to go to the hotel. And Wayne said to the couple of Russian officials, you know, the fucking big guys. We're going to go eat, right? Yeah. He goes, yeah, we we want to go to the hotel first, and the guys like, no, we're going to the restaurant. And Wayne's like, no, I really think. The guys want to go to the hotel, and this big Russian guy just stood up to Wayne's face and goes, "There is no compromise. We're going to the restaurant." Oh yeah, like, yeah. Wayne's like, "Man, oh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, okay. they're like caviar there." And one okay. one funny story is that when we got to Russia, we went to that place, and we just sitting around like we can't really eat this stuff. Yeah, they got nice food. I'm talking about they must oh, spend so much beautiful money restaurant on beautiful. that food. And so the, the the waitresses didn't speak English. I'm sitting there with Paul. Uh, uh, Vince Taylor and Aaron Baker. We sit at the table, and then uh, Paul's like, uh, "Can you get some bananas? Some some bananas?" And earlier that day, we went into the gym. Just before they went to the gym and then to the restaurant, we went into the sauna. We just walked around this 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 rest this uh, hotel. Went to the sauna because we was like, "Okay, we'll try to sweat a little bit." And there was a guy in there and a girl in there. They both butt ass naked. The guy's like his whole package hanging off the the edge of the thing. So we were standing there, we was like <laughs> trying not to look at him and everything. So when we got to dinner, no one said anything still. Got to dinner or to the to the dinner table or whatever. And we just sitting there like we don't want to eat. We're gonna compete soon. So they're like, Oh, can you give me a banana? And then uh, Paul's like, you know, you know, a banana, and like, and then Aaron Baker breaks into the conversation. He was like, you know, a banana. And he starts fucking peeling back banana things, right? <laughs> and he's all, he's all, man, you see home, you see, you see what you see in the sauna? You, did you check that out in the sauna? We was going, yeah, yeah. Like it was a it was a naked lady there. It was a long trip. And then he was like, Aaron Baker's like, I know, he was just hanging there. He was like, oh my, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but the 97 the table, like, uh, like that's uh, all you took from the sauna was on way hanging next package to the package yeah 97 just to, to quick because the lee was involved lee when you're talking about this 97 moscow trip and you talk about the, the bus ride and you said that the russian official you remember that the russian official had a blinking problem you know oh, yeah, 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 blinking. Yeah, yeah. and then uh you know here he comes he finished something uh, he was on the microphone. 
So here comes Lee, gets up, take a microphone, and start saying something, blinking like this. Ah. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Mr. Blinker. That leads to you know, trouble. That leads to trouble. We were in <laughs> Russia less than uh, uh, 16 hours. We arrived. Yeah. And the worst thing was, too, in Russia when the show was over, I couldn't wait to get off stage because I looked so shit. So I ran upstairs, took all my clothes off, go to jump in the shower, and it's just fucking cold water. I mean, freezing cold. I'm standing under there washing the tan off. But you probably don't remember in Hungary, in the restaurant there, Paul Delet and I are at the table, and NASA's over there. So Paul's like, watch this, Lee. Calls the waiter over. He goes, that chocolate cake there, take it over and give it to him. So he, this waiter walks over and puts it down in front of NASA. NASA just stands up like, boom, who did this? This isn't fucking funny. Who sent oh, yeah, the yeah, cake? Right. Oh, he just started oh, ripping man. into the, the poor waiter. Paul's laughing his head off. And then that's around. You think this is funny, Paul? This is serious. You're sending me chocolate cake and fucking... <laughs> there's so many stories i think there's so many stories where we like we had, like i said like i say every time we got to do this again man because we had a point right now where i gotta i gotta cut this short guys i i, I really appreciate you guys taking the time and is that a, is that a short joke is that a short joke <laughs> <laughs> no no but i, I really want to get i want to do this again and i Lee, i know there's so much more stories uh, from back in the past, the blast from the past, but right now we're really at a point where I got to cut this short, man. Thanks, but, man. But, you know, it's it's the history of the sport. Now. I know, I know. That's why, that's why I started got, this round. Got to tell it rough and raw. Yeah. Huh? That's why I started the old school round table because there's just too many stories that... The, we'll have... We'll have we'll have some news stories in two weeks' time when I hook up with Chris in Venice. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so, when, so when are you coming? I'll be in Venice oh, from the 20... 27th of May to the 1st of June, I'll be back down in Venice, California. So you're literally just coming for a couple of days? Uh, about a, just over a week. Yeah, just for so the induction. Where are you going to be before that? I thought he was going to – you got to come to San Diego, man. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll get into trouble with you, Chris. I know it. My wife says <laughs> – no, my wife's already saying – my Chris. wife's already said, are you and Chris hooking up when you're over there? No. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, Chris, slow down a bit. He slowed down a bit. <laughs> Oh, not, no, not, 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 hey, not, not listen. When troublemaker gets there. We, <laughs> we went. Hey, we went to the uh, to the Capitol Grill. They had dinner, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we got. Yeah, and then we had to walk back in the rain. Of course. Thank you, guys, man. I really appreciate you all, man. And I, it's funny to hear the stories, man. And I can't wait to do that again. Thank you. Okay, right. guys, you guys stay guys. safe. Great. Lee, thank you, man. I know it's early for you. I really oh, appreciate you. you, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's good, good, good talking to you all. All right, again. take care. Yeah, guys. yeah. See you guys soon. Be safe. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.